Welcome back to Cryptos for Us. I'm George. We're all George. So today, let's keep it simple. Let's talk about the one Bitcoin strategy to have made billions upon billions for others. So what is that strategy? It's the one that's been proven time and time again. So I'm going to talk about that. Talk about why there are more gains ahead. And let's talk about everything else that's going on in the world today. All right, let's do this. Welcome, 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 guys. Actually, I'm a little early. The market bell didn't ring yet, but it's about to. But look at Bitcoin. It's been trending up since last night. And we are above 37,000 once again. And there's the market bell. More importantly, we're above that above that resistance line, right? So things are looking good. Some of the alts today are blowing up and I'm gonna to try to cover why they are. For example, Mutable is up like 15%. You got Optimism up five, you got Lido, and then you have like Solana and everything else, right? Of course, let's not forget Ethereum. There are a lot of alts that are exploding today. So I'll try to cover some of them as well in addition to Bitcoin. But today the US market, what is it going to do? Right now it's still in the green, but after yesterday's Powell's closed the effing door. <laughs> um, yeah, so some people are kind of afraid of what he said because he was really hawkish. He was basically indicating that maybe they have not done enough. Okay, so obviously that's throwing uh, throwing things off a little bit. So people are wondering if there is going to be another rate hike, right? Hopefully never again for some time. <laughs> Hopefully just next year we start seeing cuts. But, you know, he, yeah, I don't know. Maybe that's just, that's just Powell. You know, he does his thing. He always be, he always talks hawkish, but he's acting dovish. That's for sure. Um and today I saw this, China's largest bank, ICBC, was just hit by a cyber attack. So that's no good. Obviously no good, right? But that's why decentralized setups or networks like Bitcoins is the best. Bitcoin is now processing, since the beginning, like no, no volume, no US dollar settled. But now it's processing over a billion dollars worth of settlements every single day. And there's no outages, no outages for Bitcoin. Bitcoin continue to just, just process transactions. That's basically it because we have a decentralized setup and it's powered by thousands upon thousands upon thousands of miners worldwide. There's no centralized entity, right? That's one of the amazing things about Bitcoin. It, this network has never gone down and it hasn't been hacked because it's the most secure network on the planet too. So even the largest banks on earth, they still go down. Some of the largest companies on earth, sometimes their services go down, right? But not Bitcoin and everyone overlooks that. All right, now moving forward, what else is going on with Bitcoin? Well, just take a look at this. One year ago, one year ago, Bitcoin fell down to its low about $15,000, okay? I, I would say it's not even one year ago. Uh, earlier this year, in January of this year, right? We, we were about there too. I think we were a little bit higher at $16,000, $70,000, but still. We fell to a low of $15,000 one year ago. And had you been DCAing since then, you would be very, very, very in the green. Now, every single cycle, it's really hard to call bottom. Some people guess it and they are accurate, right? But some people, they make wild, wild, you know, guesses and it ends up really hurting themselves and others, right? I know every single cycle, when Bitcoin was at 15,000, guess who was calling for a new low? Actually, it was just one, one person and many people. Many people called 12,000 and 10,000 and 8,000. And they said it had to go down before it goes up, right? Well, we haven't stopped going up since then. And it's the same thing back last cycle when Bitcoin hit $3,000. 
There were other people during then that said that, hey, Bitcoin had to go down to a thousand or eight hundred dollars before it goes back up. And it didn't it didn't need to. Right. So that's the thing. So without trying to guess where the bottom is and waiting for a moment that may never, ever happen. You just DCA dollar cost average. You buy when prices are low and you do it in increments and you set it on a schedule and then you just wait, wait for the gains to come because once Bitcoin or Ethereum or Solana or Cardano or any of the ones that you've been DCA since the bottom, right? Once they get back to their previous high, you will be well, well in the green. Here's a perfect example. Had you been DCAing into gold or S&P 500 or Bitcoin since the top, very, very top in 2021, you would be up in all three. But there's one clear difference. Gold and S&P, you would be up only 5%. Bitcoin, you would be up 40%. Even from the very top point, from 69,000 Bitcoin, that shows you how powerful it is is and many of you guys that has been following the strategy are now in the green and my dca portfolio the one that i've been showing you guys will probably turn to green this coming week as well right and also it has been very green from michael michael sailor microstrategy their shares not only microstrategy shares are soaring because of bitcoin's rise that's no surprise. As a company, people are excited. They're like kind of like the first Bitcoin ETF because it's just a company that's loaded <laughs> with Bitcoin, right? But besides that, he always reminds people the ultimate Bitcoin strategy, right? He started in 2020, and since then, Bitcoin is up 192%. And then you verse that with everything else, the only thing that has outperformed it is his own company stock at 246%, or this one says 242. But everything else, NASDAQ, S&P, Google, Microsoft, Apple, Meta, Netflix, Amazon, Oracle, IBM, CRM, SAP, nothing has come close to the performance of Bitcoin. And what did MicroStrategy do? What did Michael Saylor do? to gain 1.1 billion in profit and counting that Michael Saylor tried to time bottom, that he tried to look at all these lines and say, well, this is a good time to be buying. No, all he did was just TCA. And at random times too, sometimes he DCA very high, 40, 50,000. Sometimes he DCA very low, around 10,000 and 15,000, right? All he did was DCA. That's it. There's no silly... No silliness, okay, basically. All he did was DCA, and he's proving that strategy, but it's not just him. It's not like he was in it very, very, very early, but there's many others that have been in this space much earlier than even Michael Saylor, and they're all sitting pretty with their billions too. So it's the one strategy that works, and I'm gonna keep talking about it. I know most of you guys already know it, but there's always new people that come into this space they ask about memes because they want to get in and something that pumps to the moon and they become a millionaire overnight. Well, that's just risking. That's just gambling, right? You're risking way too much. If you want the ultimate strategy, you got to be in a long, you got to be focused long haul, be in it for a while, right? And, and give this a go <laughs> because you won't lose out. This is not gambling. This is investing. Right. There's a big difference between investing and gambling and being a DGEN too. That's 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 its own category. All right. So it's really that simple. The ultimate strategy I made billions, billions upon billions upon billions upon billions. Uh, of course, uh, there are factors at play that helps drive Bitcoin upwards. Besides, you know, besides. I mean, I guess. No, I take that back. Uh, there are many things to look forward to, right? <laughs> While we're DCAing, let's let's go with that angle because there's a lot of factors at play. Uh, but you know, ETFs obviously uh, play a big factor right now. We are in the week where we may get 12 simultaneous uh, approvals of Bitcoin spot ETFs. And yesterday, 
The reason why Ethereum jumped up because yesterday BlackRock wanted to get in on a fund uh, with Ethereum. And that's why Ethereum went up because BlackRock filed their spot Ethereum ETF. So they don't want just Bitcoin. They want Ethereum too. They want to dominate everything. Not to say that getting BlackRock in and dominating is a good thing, but that's what they're trying to do. Uh, Haim, 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 yeah, I think that's Haim. I'm a truck driver listening since 2021. Been a whole corner last month. Now my portfolio is $47,000. Let's go. Awesome. Awesome, my man. You're doing it right. Um, all right. So, yeah, we got a lot of Bitcoin ETF stuff coming up, but it's not the only catalyst that will drive Bitcoin much higher this cycle. Right. Uh, many, many, many things are coming. But yesterday I did tell you guys, hey, just because Bitcoin shot up to the moon to thirty eight thousand and came back down to thirty six thousand. Right. Does that mean things are over? No, I, I reminded you guys that it's still according to plan. And this is the plan <laughs> to break out of this current channel, right? And once we do, just like all previous times, we start skyrocketing, right? So this is one way to look at it. Here's another way to look at it. What's happening right now is very, 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 very similar to two cycles go. Okay, that's the one I came in where we formed a bottom, we tested this trend line a couple times, and then we started skyrocketing, right? That's what a lot of people are thinking. This cycle is very similar to the previous cycle, the pre two cycles ago, not the previous cycle, because the previous cycle, we had this thing called COVID and the pandemic, and that kind of screwed up markets and screwed up the way Bitcoin was meant to move. But we are moving exactly, almost exactly identically to the time before in 2014, all the way up to the peak of 2017, right? We're moving very, very, very similar to that. And if we are following and we're mimicking that same period, that means Bitcoin should be hitting, should be hitting $50,000 by the end of this year in the 50s, high 40s, 50s. Is that unreasonable? No, that's actually very reasonable. The way we're moving right now, we're already at 37,000, right? And that's without a spot Bitcoin ETF approval. Just wait until we get one. That's going to drive us to probably 40, 45 to 47,000 already. And then we still have a whole month of Santa rallying uh, to look forward to. So, yeah, we're not even, you know, we're about halfway through November, not really. We got plenty of time to get there. And then once we do get 50,000, well, then we look forward to 70,000. And then we look forward to a new high, right? Um, yeah, so that's looking pretty good as well. What else is there? Uh, banks, banks around the world, spe specifically uh, in Asia and, and in Europe, they are all following in. Now they're offering crypto futures ETFs to their wealthy clients, okay? UBS was very against crypto altogether, but now they're offering to their wealthiest clients. What did I say before? I just said this too about uh, JP Morgan. Jamie Dimon, okay, is so against Bitcoin, yet JP Morgan offers Bitcoin to their wealth division, to their wealth clients, right? It's funny that the banks, will offer what they hate the most to their wealthiest clients. Why would they do that? It's because those wealthy clients are looking for it. They're asking for it. They're asking for this new asset class that is outperforming everything, right? And the banks have no choice but to offer it. Otherwise, they're going to lose their business. These guys have tens to hundreds of millions, maybe even billions, and they want exposure to Bitcoin and crypto. Right. So these banks, even though their CEOs are still, you know, kind of like downplaying the revolution or just totally shitting on Bitcoin altogether, they're doing the opposite to their wealthiest clients. That's exactly what's happening to all major banks around the world. So think about that. 
All right, now on to some just general news. Some good, some not. Uh, Justin Sun's uh, Polionex exchange just hacked for $100 million. What did I say? I've been saying this for years now. People ask me about Tron. What do you think about Tron? What do you think about things that, that you know that's integrated or bought by Justin, like BitTorrent and everything else? I'm like, no. And Polionex, no. Anything that Justin Sun touches turns bad, right? So this does not surprise me. I've heard rumors about how bad it was at Polionex. I don't think anyone uses that anymore. But still, uh, $100 million lost, not a surprise. Hopefully none of you guys had any money on there. I'm sure they'll go try to recover. They'll go work with other exchanges to prevent hack, you know, some kind of um, cash out. But yeah, it really just doesn't surprise me. And everything about Tron is just wrong. And all the TVL and all the figures, they're all fake. They're all fake. You, you shouldn't trust anything. Uh, and if you don't, okay. And if you don't know the history, just go Google it. Google everything that Justin Sun did before. And you'll know what I'm talking about. All right, now outside of this, what else is going on? Solana is still pumping up to the moon. It went up to like $52 this morning. Now it's back down a little bit more reasonable, about $50, right? Still up. It just keeps on going. And I was trying to see if there's anything that explains it. Um, you know, besides, there's, there's a Solana Toronto that's coming up in seven days. Maybe a lot of people are excited about that. But if you're looking at, what's going on within Solana. There just seems to be a lot of projects coming aboard, um, and, and that's really it, right? And Solana has been doing very well recently. Um, no network outages as far as I know. Their TVL is going up. They are also upgrading you know, their, uh, their validators to become more even faster and more robust. You know, there's just a lot of things going on. There's no one thing that explains it, but people are just coming back, right? People left because of the FUD and the outages, and now they're coming back. I mean, that's the best way to explain it. Uh, Immutable X also having a huge day today, up like 15 or 17%. Okay, why is that? Well, I think it's due to this that was announced yesterday. They have this huge partnership with... Uh, Ubisoft, which is one of the leading gaming, you know, makers, and uh, they're going to bring games. They're going to bring games onto Immutable X. That's what they're doing. And Robbie, who is a co-founder, he's like, just pay attention. Basically, they are onboarding a ton of games. They're just moving beyond. They're not just NFTs. They're moving beyond just NFTs. They're onboarding games, and they're coming out with their own chain that's coming up, right? Funding three hundred twenty million. So. Immutable X may be a powerhouse in the coming market, uh, coming run. So that, I think, explains their huge pump today. And then also, I was looking at this too. I don't know who, what kind of intern is running Van Eyck's um, Twitter, but it's all about Ethereum and Bitcoin and ETFs. Like, this is, hopefully this is the real one. It is a real one because they, they paid for a gold check mark. But you could see, enter the Ether. So they obviously, they want to come out their Ethereum spot ETF too, right? And if you read this, it's just all about, it's just all about ETFs and Ethereum and Bitcoin and everything else. That's how bullish they are. They allow their intern to just tweet nothing about, nothing but crypto. And then I saw this lastly, I'll show you guys this. One billion dollars uh, minted at the Treasury for Tether, and this came yesterday. So I wonder what that's gonna be used for. That's pretty much it. Uh, let's see, US market today, uh, green, but look at the Bitcoin related stocks. MicroStrategy, oh my God, 510. That's very, very high, up another 3%. Let's see, Coinbase is getting close to 100 again, up 3% today. Mara is still up, uh, oh, barely, barely, 1.73, but that's okay. So crypto-related stocks doing quite well. Entire crypto market cap, or crypto, Entire U.S. market, I'm sorry, 
uh, is, is finally in the green today. Uh, entire crypto market cap is up about 2.3%, 1.41 trillion. It's starting to climb up. It's not just money swashing between one and, and, and another project. We're actually seeing entire market cap go upwards, which means new money is flowing in. Right. We have seen periods where we see certain pumps of certain coins, but the entire market cap stays the same. That means it's just people moving money around. But now we're actually seeing new money come into the space. And there will be a lot more of that. A lot more of that. I would not be surprised. I would not be surprised by the end of 2025, the entire global market cap is at $10 trillion. Uh, that, that would not surprise me. And we're talking about less than a 10x, but I mean, honestly, most of crypto will be doing a 10x from here. So 10 trillion is actually probably a pretty conservative number. We might see that number be at 12 or 14 trillion by, a 20, by 2025. Now, before you think, well, that's just way too high, keep in mind, this is all elevated to begin with. <laughs> so... Um, so yeah, that would not surprise me. All right, let's do some uh, let's do some Q and A. Yeah, Solana's at 21 billion market cap already. It might be surpassing. It might it might be breaking XRP and BNB soon the way it's moving. It it just has been so strong. It reminds me of 2021 when they did that too, and no one believed them because they just kept going and going and going. Um Jamie Gonzalez Transfer my IRA into crypto. Now I'm up 20%. Congratulations. But keep in mind, right? Crypto is very volatile. Goes up and down very quickly. So be careful, okay? Um, let's see. Joseph. Another good day for me. My portfolio just broke the 100K mark. I would love to see you speak about ADA TVO growing fast on DeFi Lima. I've seen that before, but it's not really that fast. It's still quite low. Uh, Cardano just doesn't have that much DeFi projects. So Cardano is still over here, 251 million. So, I mean, just to compare, if they, need to, if they want to catch up to Arbitrum, they have to go up like 10x, right? Um, so a lot of this is, yeah, I mean, it starts dropping off really quickly around here after Solana, Solana has been going up like crazy, 523 million and Avalanche is up there too. And Optimum, Polygon, Kronos, Base, then Bitcoin, and then Cardano, right? Cardano needs to move up, uh, way more, but you know, again, Tron with just 26 protocols at 8.38 billion, I don't trust that at all. That's why when I usually look at this, I just say skip number two. Is there something wrong there? Uh, Sean Walker, do you think a spot ETF will make it easier for institutions short Bitcoin so they could accumulate more? Yeah, usually with ETFs, you have both longs and shorts. You have inverse ETFs, right? So they could use it too. Uh, French Toaster, hey, I saw you in uh, Trading Wars yesterday. Only 3K more, and I'll be in the green. Awesome. Awesome, Lazaro. I, I bet my DCA portfolio is getting pretty darn close. This next week, I'm pretty sure I'll break even. Unless we have a big dump in the market, but uh, the way we're going, yeah. Yeah. 
Uh, I can't really share anything. Crypto Dynamics asked about CRO. I don't have anything new to talk about CRO. But Crypto.com, they survived the crypto winter. There were there were fears that they may have uh, overextended and they may go under. They didn't. They survived and they're probably better for it. Does BlackRock need to purchase BTC on exchanges for a spot or do they do OTC? They will do OTC. They will keep doing OTC until OTC dries up. That's just how it is. OTC will dry up and then where's the Bitcoin going to come from? Spot. Just keep in mind, okay, there's only so much Bitcoin that these exchanges reserve for OTC. Once that dries up, there's no more. It's not like more could be printed like money. There's only so much. So even though a lot of these big purchases may be OTC and you don't see a price pump because of it, it doesn't matter. More of it is being removed from circulation and that still contributes to the, the diminishing supply. Uh, Cholamas, I haven't looked into Celestia enough to, to make a judgment on it. Joseph, I think it's because of stable coins. They need USDC, but USDM is launching next month. It'd be a good catalyst. We've gone up a lot this year. Who are, who are you talking about in terms of who needs USDC? Joseph, I don't know which chain you're talking about. Will near recover or hit all-time high? Yes. It's quite simply... Yes. I really believe anything in the top 100 here will, will probably recover uh, fully to their previous high and, and beyond. The only one that probably won't do it is uh, Luna if it's still up here. Yeah, Luna Classic will never hit its previous high. That's for sure. But everything else in here probably will. And I say that because they're still in the top 100 because they're the strongest projects that we have. Right? Um, a lot of people... A lot of people hold on to these coins and tokens. A lot of people still pay attention to these projects. And most of these projects have not given up and they continue to build. So those are, that's a recipe for success. Law is like got a half, half a Bitcoin at 15.5. God told me to buy. Congratulations. So you're doing pretty well. Arnell, thank you. Isn't the hard part of DCA right now is just not following in? I find myself trying to stick to $100 a day. It doesn't matter. It's, a, it's based on how much extra cash you have. If you're able to and you could DCA more, go ahead, right? And right now, even if you DCA, let's say you, you DCA into Solana right now at 50, okay? And then it goes down to like 45. Yeah, I know it kind of sucks temporarily because you've just gone down 10%, but you know it's going to come back. Right? That's the whole point of DCA. So you take the guessing out of it. You buy and the cost average while things are low, especially on the, on the coins that you love. right? And then you just forget about it. Hey, I just noticed XRP is down 7% today. I don't know what's going on with that. It could be because yesterday was just higher. That's all. But yeah, I mean, that's really that, that simple. Um, Gum, gummy, gummy by Jim or gum by Jim? Can you speak your partnership with Wagaman Games? Where do you see it in the future? I'm, a, I'm not just a partner. I'm, I'm an advisor for them, right? So I know, I got to know Scott a lot and and Ian, uh, because they were filming on Next Crypto Gem, right? And I've been speaking to a lot, um, to both of them a lot afterwards too. So they're really hardworking guys. So that's. That's rare, especially Scott. He hustles and hustles and hustles, right? So when I see that, it's it's pretty rare to bump into guys like them. So that's why. That's why Advisor, I think they could do quite well with their mobile game. They're building on their lore. They have some spectacular advisors to the team. Um, Arnell, how do you feel about Cardano do dot merch? I don't. I You know, people keep talking about it. I have no idea.
Okay. Uh, let's see here. On November 6th, Cardano announced it will use Substrate to build his partner chain project, uh, Substrate's foundation of Polkadot. So that is not a merge at all. That's just using, that's just using, like, the framework or the language for Polkadot. That does not mean the two are merging at all. So when people keep asking about that, it just, it makes no sense. They're two separate chains. I don't know. So, yeah, I don't think it really, I don't know. Polkadot is just one I've never been excited about, to be honest. I've never really got excited about Polkadot. It just kind of hugs, hangs there. But there's just better plays, in my opinion. Joseph, uh, you're talking about Cardano. Okay. You know, having all these stable coins means nothing, Joseph. You need actually people to use them for something, right? On Cardano right now, like what do people use those stable coins for? Like even if you're trading a min swap, everything, all the pairs are ADA pairs. They're not USDC pairs. So what's the point of having all these stable coins on, um, on Cardano right now? I don't know. They're all ADA pairs on, uh, on min swap. Uh, good morning from Dubai, Husky, or Husky. Good morning. Uh, will Litecoin ever get an ETF? It may. It may. Uh, I'm not looking forward to it, but it may. I I think XRP will probably be the next candidate, if I had to guess. After they settled a lawsuit, XRP will probably get it, get an ETF. Pump or dump this weekend, pump. From here on out, it's just going to be all pumps. Uh, a moment of silence for those who wrote off CRO. Okay. Karate Combat app on Hedera. What do you think? What do you think the, what do you think of, think of the UFC did the same? Uh, UFC may be doing Karate Combat. They're a fighting league that I'm associated with, and I'm trying to get the IFC, the Influencer Fight Club, going. Um, yeah, they have a really nice system. Their app allows you to kind of stake on fighters. In a way, it's betting, but it's not. And then you can earn karate tokens, right? So maybe UFC does that. Keep this up. Ryan says, I'm so disappointed I buy, didn't buy Soul at 16. Yeah, you know, hindsight is always 2020. But when you want a DCA and it's not moving, it feels bad. But then, you know, again, don't try to chase. Just buy in what you like. I know that's impossible. You know, emotions and you like to see what's, you know, what has the momentum, what's trending. So it's, it's, it's hard to remove it completely. Right, I get it, but you know, with a lot of the the great projects that existed before, you know they're gonna come back. George, you use a stablecoin DeFi, and permanent loss goes away because of the price of the stablecoin. I, Joseph, you don't need to explain that to me. I know that. I'm saying it doesn't exist in Cardano because all the trading pairs. For the liquidity pools are slash ADA. They're not slash USDC or slash USDM. I of course I get. Of course you want to trade 
uh, with stablecoin. But you know, and that doesn't that that's not even right either. You want to keep a stablecoin if you do, if you just want to remove the if you want to remove um, the if you want to remove losses. But even if you had a USDT USDC trading pair, you still have a permanent loss if the token that you're trading goes up or down. Unless you're just doing two pairs of stable coins. <clears throat> Thoughts on uh, Charles's announcement at a recent Cardano summit, basically making the Cardano system to a encompassing entire crypto market. That doesn't make any sense to me, and I have no thoughts on it. I don't get how he's going to encompass the entire crypto market. In the realm of crypto gaming, this is seven on. What projects do you believe have potential to dominate the scene and why? There's very little in the crypto gaming scene that I believe has the potential to dominate. Gala used to be one of them because it's a gaming platform. It's not just one game. They still may do it. They're still the biggest, but I, st I still don't like that lawsuit. A uh, couple lawsuits, right? Uh, Vulcan also has a lot of potential. They're... They, I would say, are the second biggest. Um, and I know Jamie. I also met him on the next Crypto Gem, right? And I think Vulcan has a really good shot of becoming a huge powerhouse, even bigger than they are this coming run, because they they do have a lot. They do have a lot. And there's a lot of other smaller ones. I mentioned Wagman Games before, um, DeFi Kingdoms. You know, there's a lot of smaller ones that are trying to figure it out, right? But there's not a whole lot. And a lot of people have been talking about Luvium, too. Luvium is supposed to come out with their next beta version on the 28th or something, end of this month. You know, a lot of these projects have been trying to figure it out. But none of them have been able to draw in millions upon millions of users yet. So we're still waiting for that. The next game could be out of nowhere. And if they draw in a million users... They're going to dominate. They're going to dominate and be number one. But we just haven't seen that yet. Pete, 600 in your hand. What do you buy right now? I don't know. Just more Bitcoin, I guess. Boring answer, but I don't know. Uh, maybe if you didn't want to buy Bitcoin, buy Solana because it's so hot. Uh, that's what I would do. I'm not advising what you would do. But if it was me, Bitcoin is still very strong. And something else is very strong is Solana. And Chainlink is also very strong. Injective is also very strong right now. And Pepe is too. Pep, where's Pepe? Pepe, yeah, above five hundred million again. Hosky, I'm I'm gonna be a hundred percent honest with you. I'm I'm not gonna be doing that and watching that video, because I have better things to do with my life. <laughs> I'm sorry, like his his his, his like. His like interviews are like, or Q and A's are so long. I just don't have time to watch it all. <clears throat> if Seoul doesn't explode, they will go to all time high soon. Oh, you mean explode as in like it it crashes and burns? Yeah, I mean they they're still a long way off from their previous high, but can they get back up there? Yeah, the way they're moving right now, I mean Solana's they're weird. This you know since a few months ago they started pumping right, but they're moving in my opinion they're moving too fast, way way faster than they should. And it's remind me a lot of 2021 when they were doing the same thing, 
right? And we now know why they were moving up so much because SPF kept buying more and more and more. Like right now, there's someone behind the scenes that's just buying a ton of Solana. Um, I don't know who it is, but someone is buying a, a ton of Solana right now. Maybe it's a new FTX that's doing it, but you know, it is moving way, way, way quick, quicker than it should be. At this point, you know, if it, at this juncture, I guess, um, it's not unreasonable to think that it could be at number four in in no time. It could it could flip XRP and BNB in no time. I mean, you, you just, you know, you, you gotta, you gotta apply. Sometimes you just gotta go with your gut, right? Like sometimes you just like, it just, there's no reason for it. You just kind of know that something's off and something is off with Solana. Like it, it's moving way too quick than, than, than it should be, right? I mean, just look at this. Look at last 60 days, Bitcoin has moved 45%, which is phenomenal. Very little have outperformed 45%, but you know, so a lot is at 184%. That's just insane. And someone like Chainlink also, 156%, which is insane too. You generally don't ever see that with Chainlink. Um, and you see everything else is like, you know, 40s or below, which is normal, right? So, but we definitely have a few that's standing out right now. There's just like, there's something going on. We just don't know what it is. They're talking about a Sol ETF. No, Sol ETF won't come anytime soon because Solana has not been sued by the SEC yet and they have not been proven to be a commodity. Until that happens, we're not going to get a Solana ETF. That's why I think XRP will be the next candidate because according to the SEC, there are only three that are officially commodities, Bitcoin, Ethereum, and XRP. So obviously if there was going to be another ETF, it would be XRP. There's no other, I mean, even stable coins, according to SEC, are securities. So everything else under the sun are considered securities besides those three, right? So obviously, if there's going to be another ETF, it's going to be XRP. SPF is buying Solana in jail. I don't know. Maybe. Uh, speaking of gaming, I know uh, Vulcan has been doing very well. PYR has been blowing up recently, too. If you look at last month, it's been doing very well, up 110%. Gala. Uh, let's see, last month. Gala is not bad, up 81%, despite the lawsuits. I've been saying that. People still enjoy Gala. It's just I, I can't believe the, the founders have to resort to lawsuits like that. Um what else I was going to check? I forgot what I was going to check. Oh, Alluvium. A lot of people are asking about Alluvium. Let's see what Alluvium is doing. Oh, that's a huge jump. It doesn't even show. 142%. Alluvium also, a lot of a lot of enthusiasm. But, you know, here's the thing. Look, look at that. I don't I don't I can't even comprehend that. Alluvium was at $1800 before. 1850, right? So despite the fact they have one month list looking good, is it going to go from 93 to 1800 this cycle? I just can't see it. They were way, way, way too hyped up in 2021. Just way too hyped up. That's why I'm so bearish on Alluvium because I felt like I was, uh, you know, I was rugged in a way because they were promising this awesome game and it was right around the corner and it's still not out yet, you know.
Here's an interesting question. Web3 Vision. How can you be a true BTC fan if you don't have enough in stacks? It will be the BTC economy. Because I don't really believe in the BTC economy. I don't believe Bitcoin should go in that direction. It's a bonus. But I believe Bitcoin should stay as store value. That's its main purpose. Not to become an ETH killer. It's not to be like dominant in DeFi or tokenizations or NFTs. Those things should be reserved for the likes of Ethereum and Solana and Cardano and Avalanche. Bitcoin should stay true to what it is, a store of value and a medium exchange. That's really it. But I do have stacks, right? But I, I just, I don't think Bitcoin needs to go in that direction. I really don't. Uh, Sean Walker. Hey man, thanks for joining. Uh, Copy, cornucopius. Isn't this the? Isn't this that that the metaverse game? Thirty four percent, twenty six million. That's not. That's not that great. Isn't this that that metaverse game that's supposed to come out on Cardano but has never did? Yeah. It looks great. You we we all get fooled by this. Like Star Atlas is another example of this. Okay? There's a lot of games that'll that'll show the the most amazing trailers. But they're never done. So, yeah, this game is not done. I bet this game won't be done for a long time. That's why like with a lot of these crypto games, I'm very disappointed. Star Atlas is another one. It's 32 million. Look at where they were before, right? Like, they were at 23 cents. They're less than a cent right now. And they were one of the hyped up games, too, of 2021. So, I don't know. I just, I don't, I just don't trust games. Until one comes out and... Everyone's talking about it, saying this is the best game ever and it's drawing like millions of users. Then, you know, I'll, I'll fully support it. But right now, it's just like I've been fooled way too many times by all these game companies that say they're going to have the best game ever and then they never release them. Uh, Evil's asking about Tesla. Do you think. Te Tesla letting all other EVs use their charging station will be a pain in the ass for Tesla owners. Yeah. And plus, it's it's a, you know, it's a, what is it? Perception? It's an image, no, not, no. It's an image thing, too. When you're a Tesla driver and you park at a supercharger station, it's like, you know, look at me, I'm a Tesla owner, right? Now imagine you park and there's a Nissan Leaf right next to you. Like... <laughs> Like, what is that car doing there, right? Like, you don't want to see that as a Tesla owner. But I get why Tesla's doing it, because they get money to grow out the supercharger station, and they get to dominate the standard, which is even more important, right? But as a Tesla driver, you don't want to see these normal cars. You don't want to see a Kia, you know, a Kia EV6 or something parked next to you when you're charging. Like, no Tesla driver wants to see that. Triangle says, my Ferrari has been spending 20% of time getting repairs, horrible quality. Which Ferrari? Is uh, Mine is rock solid. Here, Tesla's normal car at owner's. And owner is not happy with it. People drive around with a sticker saying Un unhappy car owner. No, no one drives around with that sticker. You're making that up. But Teslas are becoming more and more normal. That's reality. You see Model Ys and Model 3s everywhere. It, it's the same. I would say the same thing back in 2007. Those of you guys that were, are old enough to remember that. When the iPhone came out. Everyone wanted an iPhone because it was cool. It was very cool to have an iPhone. 
because it's so different, right? And then, you know, fast forward 10 years, 20 years, no one cares if you have an iPhone. No one cares if you have a 15 or 14 or 13 or 12 or 11. They all look the same. It's not special anymore. That's how driving a Tesla is, you know? I don't know why it takes Elon so long to redesign his cars. And, you know, everyone seems to be driving the same thing. It's losing its appeal. Um, I don't know. That's not a bad take. That's a perfect take. Like seriously, there's there were a lot of people that wanted to buy Tesla because they wanted to feel cool, like they're part of a cool club and they're getting the EV and you know something special. Now you get a Model Three for like, you know, thirty grand. It's like a normal car, and it's not that special anymore. Roulette wheel. I have zero thoughts about CRO. I don't know why everyone keeps asking about it. Probably because it's going up and then people just ask about random things that are going up. I don't like CRO. And I don't think I'm that's ever going to change. Tesla at Singapore is special. Yeah, in the U.S. it's not special. I see it like every other car is a Tesla now. So if you want to stand out, you got to get something that's different. Like for Tesla, you get an X or an S because there's a lot less of them. Um, overall, though, I'm not an EV fan. I'm just, I don't really care for it. I am going to shop for like a winter car, though. Um, I just want to get like a beater beater truck or uh, SUV for the winter. I don't know what I'm going to get. Do I keep several bottles of Blue Label or buy one at a time? Uh, one at a time. I do have another one already given to me as a gift, so I don't have to buy another one yet. And I don't drink it as much as people think I do. All right, guys. Let you guys go. Bitcoin is doing well again today. Not just Bitcoin. Solana is doing well. A lot of others are doing well, right? So the proven strategy that has made billions, Bitcoin. No. <laughs> DCA, dollar cost average. It's the winning strategy. So keep at it, guys. And you'll make your billion soon. All right? Smash the like, subscribe to the channel, enjoy your Friday. I'll see you guys tomorrow morning, 10.30 a.m. Central Standard Time, and then we'll see where Bitcoin is then. All right, have a good one. Take care. Bye-bye.